morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it's just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds, get on a good nutritional supplement program. We can help you. We want to help you change your life today. I want this to be the best day of your life. I want this to be a memorable day. If you're dealing with a health crisis, a degenerative disease, if you know somebody, have a loved one, family member, workmate who's dealing with a health challenge, we want to help you change your life or their lives today. 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please go to brightsideben.com. You can order products right off the website. Same with criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And you can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. I personally like talking to somebody. I don't Try, I don't order off the web. I always like talking to somebody. So if you had a problem getting through on the, on the website or if you had a problem somehow figuring out what to order, please call the phone team, 866-735-2470, and they can tell you all about it. They're friendly and knowledgeable, and they know all about the longevity products and the longevity business as well. If you're interested in purchasing any of our skin health products, including our retinol 5% gel made with a whole bunch of retinol. Don't be fooled by fake retinol products, by the way. We talked about this yesterday. I was absolutely blown away when I opened up this box and looked at this product, although I had fair warning uh, from a company called Watts Beauty. I don't know how these people live with themselves. It says right on the jar, right on the, uh, the bottle of cream, 2.5% retinol, and I can tell you officially, bull crap. How a company can put that on a label and on the ingredient deck and advertise it on the internet, Watts Beauty. How do you live with yourself? Anyway, retinol 5% gel, the real deal. You can tell by the smell, and you can tell by the effect, and you can tell by the color. Retinol has a yellow color, and it has a very characteristic smell to it. Retinol 5% gel with vitamin C. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we are talking vitamin E. Particularly has it has to do with the fatty system of the body and the skin. Vitamin E's, uh, vitamin E, uh, we've known about it for uh, almost 100 years. It was first discovered as a reproductive nutrient, hence the name tocopherol, which refers to the fact that it improves fertility. Toco- tocopherol means to bear children, and vitamin E was first discovered as a as a fertility vitamin, and we've known about it, as I say, for almost almost 100 years. It was first discovered. Uh, in 1920 or so, 19, 1920, 1925. Vitamin E is actually like other fatty vitamins, like vitamin A, like vitamin K, like vitamin D. Vitamin E is a family of vitamins. Vitamin A, too, is a family of vitamins. That's why retinol and retinoic acid are distinct from retinyl palmitate. The family of, and by the way, beta carotene also, and carotenes in general are vitamin A-like. There's actually a skin ingredient, a component in the skin called squalane, or squalene, which is sometimes used in skincare products, and that's kind of like a vitamin A molecule, retinoid, they call them. Likewise, vitamin K and D, these are families of vitamins. There's eight different vitamin E's, and we will be talking about the eight different forms, tocopherols and tocotrienols, because they are relevant. 
Yesterday we talked about insulin, resensitizing your body to insulin, super important, caloric restriction, fasting. You guys, I am not just saying this because I'm a food Nazi. Every single inflammatory health challenge, which means all degenerative health challenges, benefit, uh, improve under conditions of calorie restriction and under conditions of fasting. We, we need to understand that there's this antagonistic relationship between human beings and corporations. Corporations want us to eat. Human beings really are not designed to eat a lot. We're designed to eat a little, we need some food, but we don't do well with a lot of food. Hence, our obesity epidemic and diabetes epidemic and inflammatory disease epidemic, but corporations need us eating. Throughout history, empires have been created by humans eating because we're hardwired to find food. Even though our bodies don't do well with a lot of food, our brains are hardwired to look for it because for millennia, Hundreds of thousands of years, there wasn't a lot of food. Having a lot of food is a very recent phenomena. Our bodies haven't, dis haven't uh, evolved to deal with it, but corporations want us to eat. This is why we're, we're bombarded with commercials and marketing and, and branding strategies. And the, the smartest, most brilliant minds in the world are dedicating their lives to figuring out how to get us to eat more. They work for companies like the Morell Institute or the Manel Institute which what's called Manel or Morell Institute in Philadelphia, where they study how to get us to eat more, how, how to create chemicals. This is an entire think tank research facility that, that's funded by the food and drug industry, and they're the similar industries, by the way, owned by the same big corporations, multinational corporations. And these brilliant PhD minds spend their days trying to figure out what kind of chemicals they need to put in the Doritos to keep us eating them. We are manipulated through food. McDonald's is not our friend. Burger King is not our friend. You want to drive by, not drive through. Give them the finger as you're driving by. They hate you and your family. That is after our funds are extracted. I don't mean to beat up on the, the corporatocracy of food, but it's something that we need to pay attention to. The com people who run the commercials are not our friends. If you could just, if you could rip past the, the funny commercial, and some of them are pretty funny, or the compelling commercial, you'll see evil with a capital E. And I'm not saying it's the people. It's, it's the, it, it, the motivation, the greed behind food. And it costs us our health. We want to be cognizant and vigilant of this antagonistic relationship between us and the people who are supplying our food, unfortunately. A lot of it has to do with nutritional deficiencies because when we are micronutrient starved, when we are starved in micronutrients, this was Dr. Wallach's brilliant insight, when we're starved of micronutrients, vitamins and minerals particularly, we will eat more because our body's attempting to find those micronutrients. This is why supplements, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is one of the best weight loss tools you'll ever use. It's one of the best appetite suppressant tools you'll ever use. You don't need Jenny Craig. You don't need Weight Watchers. You don't need Nutrisystems. If you pound the micronutrients into your body, you will find yourself naturally gravitating away from food because the body doesn't like to eat. It's hard on the body to eat. Metabolic syndrome we talked about as insulin resistance syndrome. It's a classic sign of overeating and it affects 100 million Americans. The underlying mechanism is Insulin stops working, and this happens when insulin is being, when cells are being bombarded with insulin. Over and over and over again. This is the stupidity, utter nonsense of the grazing strategy that dietitians will still tell you and doctors will still tell you to practice, where you graze all day. Bad, bad biochemistry. If you're grazing all day, your cells never get a break from insulin. They never get a chance to resensitize themselves from insulin all day long. Insulin, 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 insulin. Of course you're going to be insulin insensitive if you graze all day, particularly if you graze all day on the standard American diet. Cholesterol, by the way, is a classic sign, elevated cholesterol, a classic sign of metabolic syndrome, as is liver disease and cholesterol in the liver and sugar and and, uh, and, and insulin, they all go hand in hand, and liver disease is another serious issue. This is where vitamin E can be very helpful. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Thank you. 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or a success story you want to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, we're talking about the liver, fatty vitamins, vitamins D, E, A, and K. I call them DEEK. They're each a family of vitamins. This is why supplementing with the fatty vitamins is a little bit tricky. Supplementing with vitamin D is a little bit tricky. Personally, I recommend people get their vitamin D from A, the sun, and B, foods. Mushrooms and fish, fish liver, organ meats in general are good sources of vitamin D. If you're a vegetarian, you're going to have a hard time getting vitamin D. You're pretty much stuck to mushrooms. Vitamin D is the quintessential animal vitamin. The fatty vitamins in general are animal vitamins with the exception, well, I shouldn't say that. Vitamin K and vitamin E are found in, in, uh, in uh, plants. Uh, K in green leafy vegetables, E in grains and bran, the outside part of seeds is vitamin E rich. Vitamins D and A, on the other hand, those are animal products. And if you're a vegan, you're going to have to go, you're going to have to figure out a way to get your vitamin A. And beta carotene is not vitamin A, by the way. Okay, so before we went to break, we we're talking about the liver. Vitamin E is the ideal. It's the quintessential example of a liver nutrient. That's because it's a fat protection nutrient. The liver is a fatty organ, and it needs lots of protection because it's constantly detoxifying stuff. Vitamin E, along with selenium and N-acetylcysteine and NAC and alpha-lipoic acid, these are very powerful and important liver nutrients, fatty liver nutrients. Here's the thing about these nutrients. If you have a gallbladder problem, if you're not making bile, if you have a liver problem, if you have an intestinal problem, you're very likely not going to be absorbing these nutrients, these liver protection nutrients from food. That means an increased likelihood of liver disease. And liver disease is an epidemic, not surprisingly. 100 million Americans have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which used to be called, uh, they used to call it cirrhosis. Problem is, cirrhosis is associated with alcohol and NAFLD is in non-alcoholics, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. They had to come up with a new name for this thing because everybody's getting the same disease that you'd have to drink a pint a day out of a brown paper bag in order to get 30 years ago. These days, everybody's got, or at least one out of three Americans are dealing with this problem. So vitamin E is super duper protective for the liver. If you're dealing with NAFLD, if you're on prescription drugs, prescription drugs tox the liver, not as a side effect, but as part of the work of the body. That's what the liver does. Your doctor doesn't tell you this or doesn't know. I'm sure he knows if you ask him, but it just hasn't crossed his mind. Well, wait a minute. Isn't my liver going to be detoxifying this Coumadin? Isn't my liver going to be to detoxifying this Humira? Isn't my liver going to be detoxifying this prednisone? It, it, doesn't that mean I, my liver's doing more work? Huh, Doc, maybe I need to be supporting liver health. Maybe we should be doing something uh, going on a low fructose, low sugar diet. Maybe we should be using nutritional supplements. The more drugs you're taking, illegal as well as legal, the more pot you're smoking, the more you need vitamin E. And pot smoking is not benign. Whether or not it has medical value or medicinal value, you know, that may be. And I'm certainly not going to, uh, you know dissuade anybody from using pain medication. Pain medication can be very, very important. I've been in pain. It sucks. And I'm glad we have pain medication and marijuana may have some benefits there for, chemo, for folks dealing with chemotherapy, etc. But drugs are detoxed by the liver, whether you smoke them or whether you take them, whether they're legal, whether they're illegal. And that means more vitamin E. The more pot you're smoking, the more pills you're taking, the more uh, medication you're on, the more vitamin E you need. After a workout, vitamin E's anti-inflammatory effects can be very important, as we said yesterday, and you'll be supporting liver health. If you're a bodybuilder, if you're doing uh, steroid drugs, vitamin E. And by the way, if you're on a prescription drug or you're stressing out your liver or toxing out your liver, it's not just vitamin E. Vitamin C is super important for the liver, not surprisingly. In fact, A and C work together. Likewise, NAC, which we've talked about, which we just talked about, and selenium and alpha-lipoic acid. All of this is to say that if you're on a prescription drug, you are actually going to be feeling better, especially if you're dealing with toxicity from that prescription drug. If you're tired or you have libido issues or digestive issues, you're going to feel better when, you, when you're on the Healthy Start Pack, when you're sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine as you're taking your prescription drugs. If you're on a prescription drug, the BTT becomes extra important. The Healthy Star Pack becomes extra important. 